So question number 1, it is found that if a neutron suffers an elastic collinear collision with deuterium at rest, fractional loss of its energy is Pd, while for its similar collision with carbon nucleus at rest, fractional loss of energy is Pc. The value of Pd and Pc are respectively. Say in first question, what it is given that uh, a neutron is colliding with a deuterium, clear? And we know that mass of neutron is half of that of deuterium. So, this initially it is given that this deuterium is at rest. So, we can say that initial velocity of this neutron is u and initial velocity of this deuterium is what? 0. Okay, we know one thing that whenever two objects are colliding with each other, in that case that linear momentum of the system of two that two object will remain conserved. So, what you can say that from uh, conservation of momentum that initial momentum of this neutron is equal to final momentum of this two, two uh, combined system. So, here final velocity is v1 then mv1 plus 2 mv2 is equal to what that mu because initially this is at what initially that deuterium is at rest. Next thing it is given in the question that that collision is what elastic. Whenever collision is elastic that means what? Velocity of separation is equal to velocity of its approach that coefficient of restitution. Okay. So, from that you can say that initially it is at rest. So, velocity of up, uh, approach is equal to what? U. Velocity of separation means what? That after collision with what velocity with what relative velocity they are going. So, that is, is equal to what? V1 minus V2. When you will solve this one, you will get V1 is equal to u by 3, initial velocity u. So, after collision, velocity of that neutron is what? u by 3. In this question, they asked change in kinetic energy of neutron. They asked change in kinetic energy of neutron. So, change in kinetic energy of neutron is what? Initial energy minus after collision, what is its final energy? Just solve that. Here, this is just solution, you will get what? 8 upon 9, which is equal to 0.89 okay now in the second part of this question what they are saying that the same neutron is colliding now with a carbon molecule clear so here same thing whatever we did in first part we have to do the same thing only thing is here what instead of m instead of 2m we have to take here what 12 okay so just do the same thing what we did earlier and uh, use same conservation of momentum and uh, because this is an elastic collision we have to take E as what 1. So, same thing you will get value as what uh, when you will calculate that uh, uh, the fractional the part of kinetic energy which is lost during that collision is how much that you will get 0 0.28 clear. So, this was that question next question the mass of hydrogen molecule is 3.32 into 10 raise to power minus 27 kg. If 10 raise to power 23 hydrogen molecules strike per second a fixed wall of area 2 cm square at an angle of 45 degree to the normal and rebound elastically with a speed of 10 raise to power 3 meter per second, then the pressure on the wall is nearly. Okay. Now, see question number 2. See, in this question, what they are asking? that suppose if hydrogen molecule is striking with some angle on a wall then after collision how much pressure is acting on that wall clear. So, we know one thing that for pressure and mainly in the gases that for that pressure that uh, what is that normal force that normal force is required that we have to cal calculate here how much normal force is acting on this wall. So, how to think see if velocity is given so, we can say that we can calculate the momentum P is equal to mv, clear? This momentum can be resolved into two components. One is this P cos 45, another one is what? This P is sin 45. Similarly, after collision also, this angle is also 45. So, here this will become what? In this direction, this will become if you are saying this one uh, in along x axis. So, we can say that this is what? P cos 45 i cap and this one is what p sin 45 j cap here in this case this will become minus p cos 45 i cap 
and okay I'm, I'm writing this one as cos 45 plus cos 45 like here this will become what p sin 45 i cap this is also p sin 45 45 degree and j cap also this is j cap okay now what we have to calculate for force the change in momentum force is what that rate of change in momentum so here what we can say that okay pressure is nothing but uh, if number of molecules which is striking per second this is given so i can say that pressure pressure is nothing but this is delta p the change in momentum okay, i will write this one with small p delta p this change in momentum into n number of molecules striking per second divided by that area whatever that area is given so here change in momentum you can see here this sin 45 this is also sin 45 so along y axis that change in momentum is zero here p cos 45 minus minus of p cos 45 so what you will get here that for p i can say that this is m into v that velocity with which it is striking multiplied by cos 45 okay these two are what p cos 45 minus p cos 45 which means what 2 p cos 45 so 2 mv cos 45 i can write this one as 1 by root 2 clear multiplied by that number of molecules striking per second this is what 10 raised to power 23 clear after that divided with what area area is given as 2 or i will write here area because next step we can do that so 2 into mass is given as 3.32 into 10 raise to power minus 27 multiplied by its velocity. So velocity of this one is given as, I will just check the data once, how much velocity is given. Uh, velocity is here it is speed is given as 10 raise to power 3 meter per second. Okay, next multiplied by 1 by root 2 into 10 raise to power 23 divided by area area is given as what 2 into 10 raise to power minus 4 so now after this one when you will solve this just do the multiplication here after multiplying you will get the value 2.35 into 10 raise to power uh, just calculate that how much you will get value. I will just check it. this one. Yeah, I think you will get 2.35 into 10 raised to power 3. So, yeah, which option is this? This is third option. Just do the calculation in that one. Okay, so this question is over. Okay, so now question number 3 a solid sphere of radius r made of a soft material of bulk modulus k is surrounded by a liquid in a cylinder container a massless piston of area a floats on the surface of the liquid covering entire cross section of cylindrical container when a mass m is placed on the surface of the piston to compress the liquid the fractional decrement in the radius of the sphere is that is dr upon r now see uh, in this question number three what it is given that uh, there is a solid sphere of radius r and it is surrounded by a liquid in a container it is surrounded by a liquid now above that there is a pist uh, piston massless piston that is, that is just floating over that liquid now when we are place uh, if we are placing one object of mass m on this piston so what is the change in its radius a decrement in its radius dr upon r that we have to calculate in this question clear okay bulk modulus of the sphere is given that is we know that bulk modulus is what that is simply p upon delta v upon v actually there is is some negative sign also but we are taking this one as modulus that k is equal to p upon delta v upon v okay we know one thing that when like v is equal to what 4 by 3 pi r square this is our volume and we know from that topic of that 
errors and we know that delta v upon v if you want to calculate this delta v upon that fractional change the little change in this uh, this v that is equal to what uh, sorry here it is cube I'm sorry uh, so this one will be what 3 into delta r by r so this is relation between what relation between the delta v and that delta r okay so now we will just put all this value so k is equal to okay that pressure p is what pressure pressure is equal to what then whatever force force here acting is what your force acting is mg so mg by a in delta v by v delta v by v means what 3 into or okay here you can say that delta okay delta v we can directly say this one as into 3 delta r by r so delta r by r is equal to mg upon 3 ak clear so students in this question what is that change fractional change that is delta r upon r is equal to mg upon 3 ak main thing was this one a little bit what you have to just know that delta v relation between the uh, relation between that delta v upon v and delta r upon r we already uh, you may uh, learned this thing in that uh, first chapter that is in errors and measure okay now uh, question number 4 two batteries with emf 12 volt and 13 volt are connected in parallel across a load resistor of 10 ohm the internal resistance of two batteries are 1 ohm and 2 ohm respectively the voltage across the load lies between next question number 5 a particle is moving in a circular path of radius a under the action of an attractive potential u is equal to minus k upon 2r square its total energy is okay now see in this question what they are asking they are uh, saying that there is a uh, particle which is moving uh, along a circular path and its potential energy is given that minus k upon 2 r square. So from that potential energy you can calculate what how much force is acting and from that force because it is moving along a circle you can say that mv square upon r that centripetal force from that one you can calculate what kinetic energy of that particle what is the kinetic energy of that particle clear. So from that kinetic energy potential energy is given you can calculate total energy that is simply what summation of those two energy okay so now we will see so say what we have to do in starting that simply u is given from u from potential energy we can easily calculate what is the force clear that is simply du by dr so force just differentiate this one you will get what f is equal to k upon r cube differentiation of 1 upon r square so that is simply 1 upon r cube so this force due to this force this is moving along what uh, in a circular orbit so what you can say that okay this force k upon r cube should be equal to what mv square upon r so from there uh, so this is r cube so from there you can say that okay this is 2 so mv square is equal to k upon r square so kinetic energy half mv square so you can say that kinetic energy half mv square is equal to what 1 by 2 k upon r square clear so here kinetic energy is known potential energy is known simply you have to calculate total energy add these two you can see here by adding these two you will get what total energy as 0 so correct answer for this one is what 0 zoom ok now question number 6 two masses m1 is equal to 5 kg and m2 is equal to 10 kg connected by an inextensible string over a frictionless pulley are moving as shown in figure the coefficient of friction of horizontal surface is 0 0.15 the minimum weight m that should be put on top of m2 to stop the motion is see in question number 6 here uh, this m1 and m2 are connected with a string and uh, it is uh, m1 is uh, 5 kg and m2 is given as 10 kg so what will happen this will start to move and this is a rough surface and uh, that coefficient of friction is 0 
okay we want to in this question they are asking that what should be the minimum value of m so that this uh, system does this object m2 doesn't move clear okay so now see here that on this object m2 one frictional force will act and whenever t is equal to that frictional force the tension acting on that m2 is equal to frictional force then this object will not move clear and what is frictional force frictional force is equal to uh, like okay if it is not moving then uh, this uh, which type of frictional force will act that is a static friction and we know that that is a self adjusting frictional force and when that frictional force is less than or equal to mu n or limiting friction in that case this object will not move clear and this frictional force is equal to what t if this is less than or equal to mu n then this object will not move what is value of n we can say that n is equal to m2 plus small m into mu mu value is given as 0 0.15 this is your g and this value should be greater than or equal to t and what is t here t you can see here that if this object is not moving t is equal to what m1g so this will be equal to what m1g gg get cancel out so m2 you can say that m2 should be greater than or equal to m1 by 0 0.15 minus that m2 Clear? So writing is from the center is small. Okay. So hmm, this is M. So what is the value of M1? M1 is given as 5 kg 5 upon 0 0.515 minus M2 is what? M2 is 10 kg. 5 upon 0 0.5 means what? Hmm, just solve this one 100 by 3 minus 10 so m should be greater than or equal to this one so what value will get m should be greater than or equal to 23.3 kg so minimum mass required is what 23.3 kg if m is greater than that value then when if m is greater than that value this one 23.3 kg then you can say that uh, this object will not move so check the options in the options uh, that option uh, second three that is not possible first and fourth only and out of these uh, between first and fourth the uh, that uh, mass fourth option is given as 23 uh, 27.3 kg uh, so out of these two first and fourth that uh, fourth option is minimum so there you can go with that fourth option that is what m should be equal to 27.3 so correct answer is what that fourth option okay Next question number 7, if the series limit frequency of the Lyman series is VL, then the series limit frequency of the P fund series is, okay. So now in this question, see here, uh, Lyman, uh, they are saying that the series limit frequency for Lyman is given as that V naught, clear. So what you can say that uh, series limit frequency, limit frequency means what? That, uh, that maximum frequency so here it is what when it is at first and when it is excited that, that excited state when, or simply what you can say that it is coming from that infinity in that case the energy which is the spectrum which we are getting so in that case what will happen uh, so that n should be what infinity and uh, when this is a p fund in that case for p fund from fifth state or fifth energy level you can say that it will start or it will excite so for that case it is equal to what nu is equal to rc 1 upon 5 square minus 1 upon n square and that series limit that maximum is when when n is what infinity so this value will be will become what rc upon n is square 5 is square this is a, your what that new naught 
here for this Lyman, you can say that nu naught is equal to RC. So you can say that limit frequency is equal to RC upon 5 square and RC can be written as what? Nu naught by 5 square is equal to what? 25. So the series limit frequency here is what? Nu naught upon 25. Is it clear? So this is for P fund. It is going to the next energy level. In that case, how much energy is absorbed or emitted? Clear? So correct answer is what? Nu naught upon 25. So, so next question number 8. Unpolarized light of intensity I passes through ideal polarizer A. Another identical polarizer B is placed behind A. The intensity of light beyond B is found to be I upon 2. Now another identical polarizer C is placed between A and B. The intensity beyond B is now found to be I upon 8. The angle between polarizer A and C is. Now see here, there is an unpolarized light in this question. Okay, this part is for later part. Uh, see the first initial part that whenever an unpolarized light is passing through a given polarizer, then the it, it intensity the uh, intensity of that polarized light will become what I naught upon two. Clear? Whatever its alignment or anything, its intensity will become what I naught upon two. Next thing is what it is saying that A and this is B. So next again it is coming as what uh, initially it is saying that beyond B that intensity is what I naught upon two. So which means what these two polaroids or polarizers are what parallel. They are what parallel. Clear? Now what we are doing, we are placing one another uh, that polarizer in between this A and B. Clear? So now first thing what will happen? If it is I naught, after crossing this A, its intensity will be what? I naught upon 2. Clear? Next suppose that this angle uh, here that uh, transmission axis is making angle theta with this polarizer, then output from that Malou's law. What that Malou's law says that I naught is equal to what? I that incident into cos square theta. This is what? That Malou's law. Clear? So from Malou's law, what you can say that I naught, uh, that output here will become what? I naught upon 2 cos square theta. Now because these two are parallel, so if it is making angle theta with this one, if it is making angle theta, the transmission angle is making theta with this one. So because it is parallel, again it will make what? Same angle and actually with, in case of alignment, it will make minus theta with this one. But because here it is cos square, that minus theta will also become what? Plus only and also th that cos is a even function. So cos of minus theta is also what? Cos theta only. So here again, it will become what? I naught upon 2 cos square theta, again cos cos theta. So net output is what I naught upon 2 cos 4 theta and this is given as what I naught upon 8. Not I naught cancel. So cos 4 theta is equal to what 4 1 upon 4. So cos theta will be equal to 1 upon 4 to root 2. So theta is equal to what 45 degree. So correct answer here is what 45 degree first option. Okay. So next is question number 10. The reading of the m meter for a silicon diode in the given circuit is. Now see in this question uh, there is a diode and a resistor connected in series and whole uh, these two devices are connected with a cell having voltage 3 volt. Clear? Okay. We know that. Uh, generally uh, potential difference across a silicon diode is 0 0.7 volt clear so that much potential drop you can say that actually this is nothing but a cell of 0 0.7 volt connected and a resistor of 200 ohm and that is connected with a cell having voltage 3 volt clear so now the just you can use Kirchhoff law directly also you can say that 3 volt this must drop here 
uh, yeah, this much drop here 0 0.7 so you will get that current i is equal to v v is how much 2.3 divided by 200 so when you will solve this one uh, you will get 11 1 point 1.15 milliampere or you can uh, not milliampere into 10 raised to power minus 2 and that is equal to 11.5 milliampere so this is the answer for this question question number 10 an electron a proton and an alpha particle having the same kinetic energy are moving in circular orbits of radii re rp r alpha respectively in a uniform magnetic field b the relation between re rp r alpha is okay uh, say in this question uh, they are saying that an electron a proton and an alpha particle uh, is moving in a circular orbit in a magnetic field region and uh, they have same kinetic energy clear so we know that for radius r is equal to what mv upon qv clear and uh, mv mv is momentum and momentum can be written in terms of kinetic energy as r is equal to 2 km where k is your kinetic energy 2 root under 2 km upon qv okay now just see here the relation between mass of proton and mass of alpha particle actually we have to see mainly these two only because alpha mass of electron is too much less than this p proton and alpha particle clear okay next is charge of proton is half of the charge of alpha particle because alpha particle is nothing but it is h e 2 positive clear so here in this case there are two electron uh, two protons left and two neutrons so neutron doesn't have any charge so only charge of two protons so qp is equal to q alpha by 2 next thing is what you can say that uh, so just put the, those things we, we can see here that 2 k mass of proton okay if rp is equal to 2 k m p divided by charge of this one okay i am writing this as qp into b r alpha 2 k m alpha will be i can write the this one as into 4 m p divided by 2 q p into b now you can see here this root 4 is here here it is 2 when it will come out they will get cancelled out so your answer will be same 2k mp by qp by b so one thing is clear that uh, this radius of p and radius of alpha is same clear next thing is about electron so we can say that in case of electron mass of electron this charge of electron and charge of proton is same the, uh, next is what mass of proton and mass of electron we know that mass of electron is very much less so you can say that from here that rp is equal to r alpha which is greater than r electron so directly you can say this one so correct answer is fourth one okay next is question number 12 uh, a parallel plate capacitor of capacitance 90 picofarad is connected to a battery of emf 20 volt if a dielectric material of dielectric constant k is equal to 5 upon 3 is inserted between the plates the magnitude of the induced charge will be say in this question uh, initially there is one capacitor and it has capacitance of 90 picofarad clear now what we are doing uh, that uh, here potential is given okay it is connected across a cell having potential difference 20 volt okay now what we are doing we are introducing one dielectric of dielectric constant 5 by 3 clear so now what is uh, what will happen that due to this dielectric its uh, capacitance increases and uh, it becomes what k times of initial when there was air in between that 
then there was air medium. So, C dash is equal to what? K C. Now, you can calculate that, okay, first C here in this case, and uh, how much charge is there stored in this one uh, capacitor? You can say that Q is equal to what? C V. C is 90 into V is what? 20. Picofarad means what? 10 raised to power minus 12. So, you can say that or uh, now I can directly just use pico coulomb. So, it will become what 9 1800 pico coulomb. So, here this much charge is. Next in this case what is happening? How much charge this uh, due to this introduction of capacitor uh, sorry due to this introduction of this dielectric. Now, here charge will become what k into c is how much uh, we know that k uh, k into c dash clear or simply so it is uh, q is equal to c dash v c dash is what k k is given as 5 by 3 5 by 3 into uh, v is given as 20 and c is 90 90 into 20 so here it will become 30 30 into 2 16 5 6 5 300 so it will become what not 300 3000 pico coulomb and we know that this is what q dash q induce is equal to q dash minus q so 3000 minus 1800 it will become 1200 1200 pico coulomb which means what 1.2 into 10 raise to power minus Pico for 10 raised to power minus 12. So, you can say that this one is 10 raised to power minus 9. So, 1.2 nano coulomb. So, correct answer is what? 1.2 nano coulomb. So, option number 3. Next is question number 13. Uh, for an RLC circuit driven with the voltage of amplitude Vm and frequency omega naught is equal to 1 upon root LC. The current exhibit resonance, the quality factor Q is given, right? Okay, see, uh, in this question, it is a direct question. Here, they are simply asking quality factor and uh, like you should know this one direct value that uh, uh, quality factor is equal to what? That uh, in terms of L and R, you can say that it is omega naught L divided by R. So, direct value, you can remember that this is a standard result. So, correct answer for 13 is third option it is what omega naught l by r okay question number 14 uh, tele a telephonic communication service is working at carrier frequency of 10 gigahertz only 10 percent of it is utilized for trans transmission how many tele uh, telephonic channels can be transmitted simultaneously if each channel requires a bandwidth of 5 kilohertz Say in this question, uh, it is uh, saying that uh, there is one telephonic service that is working on a uh, carrier frequency of uh, 10, gig 10 gigahertz and uh, uh, in which only 10 percent of this bandwidth is used for this uh, is used for uh, transmission, clear. Next, if uh, uh, okay, they are asking that how many telephonic channel can be transmitted simultaneously if each channel requires a bandwidth of 5 kilohertz. Okay, so see here if each channel required a bandwidth of 5 into 10 raised to power 3 hertz means 5 kilohertz and uh, the total bandwidth which is there for transmission is this one 0 point, uh, 10 percent means 0 0.1 into 10 gigahertz this is your what total bandwidth of that tra uh, transmission line next bandwidth of one channel it is given that uh, um, in order to transmit one channel you require this much bandwidth so just divide these two uh, you will get the uh, number of channels which you can transmit in that given bandwidth Okay, so see here in question number 15, they are saying that there is a granite rod and it is clamped at the middle point, clear. 
now it is set into vibration okay uh, and that vibration is mainly not uh, that vibration is longitudinal clear so if it is clamped at this point so you can say one thing uh, this from the concept of uh, that standing wave you can say that okay here there will be one uh, node and there is anti node layer like, like it will form like this clear next thing is what uh, you can see this one this is nearly equal to what lambda by 2 and length of that rod is l so you can say that lambda by 2 is equal to what l length of this rod and they are asking fundamental frequency fundamental frequency means what speed into this lambda by 2 uh, divided by this lambda by 2 so this will become this lambda lambda you can say that if lambda by 2 is equal to l then lambda will be equal to 2l now just put the values it is given as length is given as in question number 15 okay so length is 60 centimeters so you can say that 100 by 2 into 60 divided by density is given as 2 uh, young modulus is 9.27 into 10 raised to power 10 pascal divided by 2.7 into 10 raised to power 3 clear so this is that one you will get this value uh, for uh, these are the values for that calculation in order to calculate what frequency so now uh, on solving this one you will get around 4.88 kilohertz which is nearly equal to 5 kilohertz clear so correct answer is third one okay now uh, question number 16 seven identical circular planar disks each of mass m and radius r are welded symmetric symmetrically as shown the moment of inertia of the arrangement about the axis normal to the plane and passing through the point p is okay uh, see in this question there are seven uh, circular disk clear and each having mass m and radius is r clear what they are asking they are asking moment of inertia about this point p and that axis is perpendicular to this plane oh, clear next thing is what uh, how to find that one so you have to think like you can use any method you are free to use any method uh, like you can directly uh, calculate the distance of the center of mass and just you can calculate the distance and use that parallel axis theorem for each one and you can do that you are free to do that but uh, like just think about one point that okay see here about this axis this one this one this one this one this one all six are at equidistance so what you can say that okay moment of inertia about this axis uh, uh, for this disk about this axis that is mr square upon 2 simply use parallel axis theorem if, when you will use parallel axis theorem you can easily calculate about axis which is passing through o same thing for each one so simply here moment of inertia about origin o because okay next thing is why i am doing this one once you will calculate the moment of inertia about o use parallel axis theorem to calculate moment of inertia about p so that's not a big deal so just see here moment of inertia about o next for this all six that is m six multiplied by mr square about each axis about their centers plus this distance is 2r so m into 2r square means 4 mr square so this is what moment of inertia about o clear next moment of inertia about p after this is simply we are using that parallel axis theorem whatever this whole value you will get this value as 55 mr square upon 2 plus mass total mass is 7 7 m 7m multiplied by uh, r square what is this distance r plus uh, 2r plus r which means 3r its square will become 9r square so just calculation you will get one value 181 up into mr square by 2 so correct answer is three concentric metal shells a b and c of respective radii a b and c have surface charge density plus sigma minus sigma and plus sigma respectively 
the potential of cell B is. So in this question, uh, surface charge density of three spherical cell is given. Like uh, for a spherical cell having uh, radius A is given as plus sigma minus sigma and again for outer cell it is given as plus sigma clear. Now uh, they are asking what is electric potential in this cell on, on the uh, on the cell B ok. So how to do this one ok see uh, what we can do that we can break this or we can uh, uh, separately calculate potential due to this inner cell due to this cell B and due to that outer cell C and after that total potential will be what V1 potential due to A plus potential due to B plus potential due to C. So, that will be equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. So, V1 is what ok. So, in order to calculate V1 and due to A due to this one at distance B. So, it will be equal to what total charge on A it is given as what 4 pi a square sigma divided by 4 pi epsilon naught distance that is how much b clear similarly due to b this is on surface only at distance b so this will be equal to 4 pi b square into sigma by 4 pi epsilon naught b plus due to c and this for c this is inside this is what inside so this will be total charge 4 pi c square sigma by 4 pi epsilon naught c so the, these three are what these three are the potential due to each smaller spherical cell then cell having radius b and cell having radius C. Now just add all these things. So 4 pi 4 cancel these things cancel cancel sigma 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 gone. Oh no no it is not gone sorry sigma is not cancelled out. So now what you can say take sigma common epsilon not common. So you will get a square upon b minus b plus c this is your answer for this one and in option which option is like this ok uh, just do some uh, it will be a square minus b square upon a oh, upon b plus c so correct option is fourth one ok uh, question number 18 in a potentiometer experiment it is found that no current passes through the galvanometer when the terminals of the cell are connected across 52 centimeter of the potentiometer wire. If the cell is sunted by a resistance of 5 ohm, a balance is found when the cell is connected across 40 centimeter of the wire. Find the internal resistance of the cell. Okay, uh, see in this question, in question number 18, uh, this question is from potentiometer and uh, it is saying that uh, when a cell uh, of EMF E uh, is connected uh, with in this potentiometer then its balance point or galvanometer is say showing zero deflection at 50, 52 centimeter clear ok again if that same cell is uh, sunted with a resistor having resistance 5 ohm then that uh, balance point is shifting to 40 centimeter clear now uh, Okay, so from these two data, what we can say that first thing that here uh, current is not flowing. So whatever the potential of this one, if suppose that potential gradient is phi, means potential per unit length is how much potential drop per unit length is phi. Then what we can say that potential difference here is 50 to phi, and same potential dif uh, same that is equal to what EMF of the cell, whatever the EMF of the cell, same is here clear because current is 0 if you will use Kirchhoff law also you will get what E is equal to 52 phi. Next in this one now this cell is sunted with a resistor having resistance 5 ohm clear. So what will happen that here current in galvanometer is 0 
but in this circuit current will flow because there is one closed loop okay now or simply if you will use Kirchhoff law then you can calculate what potential difference here that will be equal to E minus IR is potential difference across these two points if I am naming this point as A and B so potential difference across AB is what E minus IR or 5i or 45 so you can say that e minus ir is equal to 45 or 5i is equal to what 5i uh, yeah 5i is equal to what 45 clear so you can also say that 5i is equal to 45 or e minus ir is equal to 45 so from these two given what you can say that that okay put e is given as what 52 5 put it here then you will get 52 5 minus ir is equal to 5i similarly in the second one uh, ir put here 52 5 you will get what ir is equal to 12 5 okay next thing is what uh, just divide these two equation divide this first one and second one so from there you will get 1 upon r is equal to what 52 upon 12 into 5 plus r next cross multiply it you will get 60 plus 12 r is equal to 52 r from here you will get r is equal to 60 upon 40 so this value is how much 1.5 so correct answer is 1.5 next question number 19 uh, an em wave from air enters a medium the electric field r that is given uh, in both air and medium next uh, where the wave number k and frequency nu refer to their values in air the medium is non-magnetic if epsilon naught r1 and epsilon naught r2 refer to the relative permittivity of air and medium respectively which of the following options is correct now see question number 20 the angular width of the central maximum in a single slit di diffraction pattern is 60 degree. The width of the slit is 1 micrometer. The slit is illuminated by monochromatic plane waves. If another slit of same width is made near it, Young's fringe can be observed on a screen placed at a distance 50 cm from the slits. If the observed fringe width is 1 cm, what is the slit separation distance? Okay, see in this question, uh, it is given that uh, that angular uh, width of that central maxima, that angular width of the central maxima is given, clear, it is 60 degree and we know that in case of diffraction, if uh, that uh, uh, width of that uh, slit is given, in that case, that central maxima, it is what, 2 pi, uh, 2 lambda by A, where A is what, the distance of that or width of that slit, width of that slit. So, 2, two lambda by A is equal to what? 60 degree or in radians you can write uh, this is what? Pi by 3. Next, in case of Young double slit experiment in YDSE, we know that fr fringe width is equal to what? Lambda D separation of between that screen and that slit and width of or separation between the two two slits that is small d it is given as what small d so fringe width is equal to what uh, lambda d upon d next from here we don't know what is lambda but from that angular fringe width we can calculate the value of lambda lambda is what lambda is equal to pi a by 6 this is your what lambda next from this lambda just put this lambda in this fringe width value and because that fringe width is given so from here you can calculate what separation between that two slits suppose that hey, these are the two slits actually this is a little bit bigger so this distance is what d small d and this d, uh, small d you can calculate as what this separation uh, distance between screen and slit and uh, this is uh, width of that slit and beta is what its fringe width so just put the value d value is given as 
its value d value is given as it is 50 cm so it is 50 into 10 raised to power minus 2 into pi is 3.14 into a a value is given as 1 micrometer means 10 raised to power minus 6 divided by uh, your here it is 6 and beta beta is given as uh, what is that okay beta is 1 into 10 raise to power minus 2 okay so these values are given so just calculate this one you will get the answer it is what just do the calculation here 6 is here so 25 3 like almost you will get value nearly equal to 25 into 10 raise to power minus 6 means 25 micrometers so correct option is what third one 25 micrometers because when you will cancel this one it is almost equal to uh, 1.05 so that value here you will get as what 20, nearly equal to 25 into 10 raise to power minus 6 so third option is the correct See here, there is one silver atom that is bonded with another atom, another silver atom. So this silver atom is oscillating and with frequency 10 raise to power minus 12 per second, clear? So F value is given here that it is 10 raise to power minus 12 second, uh, sorry, uh, per second. So in this case, so the silver atom is what oscillating about its mean position okay so it is performing a simple, simple harmonic motion so one thing we know that okay if it is performing simple harmonic motion so condition for simple harmonic motion is what acceleration should be equal to what minus omega square x and next thing because it is bonded with another atom so there will be some restoring force so that acceleration will be equal to what minus kx multiplied by Ah, sorry divided by m so if you are equating these two equations what you will get that omega square will be equal to what k upon m and they are asking here that constant um, what is that force constant value of k so k will be equal to what m omega square okay m that mass mass is equal to what 108 into 10 raised to power minus uh, 6.022 into 10 raised to power 23 minus 3 into omega square means what 2 pi whole square into 10 raise to power 24 okay when you will solve this equation what you will get you will get around 7.07 .07 newton per meter clear so this is what this is your uh, that force constant with which uh, like which is acting here like simply that restoring, uh, restoring force here acting so you can um, think that whenever two atoms are are, uh, are in con uh, are uh, like bonded with each other so there is some restoring force acting on that one like a simple uh, analogy like how two objects are uh, connected with each other with a spring so same thing here also clear from a uniform circular disk of radius r and mass 9m, a small disk of radius r by 3 is removed as shown in the figure. The moment of inertia of the remaining disk about an axis perpendicular to the plane of the disk and passing through the center of the disk is. Okay, uh, see in this question, question number 22, there is a disk of radius r and its mass is 9m. And in this disk, at a distance 2r by 3, like we are removing a circle of radius r by 3 from this one and they are asking moment of inertia about center about an axis which is passing through the center and that axis is perpendicular to the plane clear so how to find this one okay um, you can think one thing uh, that you can think in one way that suppose that this is whole disk of mass 9m and radius r and 
we are adding one another disc at distance 2r by 3 at distance 2r by 3 from center having mass minus n clear like whatever the mass of this small disc same mass or negative mass we are adding, adding here next thing is what okay if its mass is 9m mass of a disc having radius r is 9m which means of area pi r square having 9m then mass of disc having area pi r square upon 9 will be what 1 upon 9 times this simple logic uh, it is what 1 upon 9 times so its mass will be what minus m just calculate moment of inertia for those two and add this about same axis important thing is what not about this axis about this axis only for this smaller disc having negative mass so moment of inertia about this bigger disc is at its center is what we know that 9 9m r square by 2 for smaller disc about its center first what is this 9m uh, sorry mr square upon 9 and multiplied by 1 by 2 why it is because here that r is what r value is r upon 3 so that's why this is becoming what r square upon 9 plus moment of inertia about center of center of that bigger disc bigger part of the disc so here at about this center it is what whatever its mass multiplied by distance this distance is how much 2 r by 3 so it is what square of the distance so it will become what 4 r square by 9 so same thing here 1 by 2 m r square by 9 plus m 4 r square by 9 now just do the calculation you will get answer as 4 m r square so moment of inertia about its center is what 4 m r square now question number 23 in a collinear collision a particle with an initial speed v naught strikes a stationary particle of the same mass if the final kinetic energy is 50 percent greater than the original kinetic energy the magnitude of the relative velocity between the two particle after collision is okay uh, see question number 23 uh, here it is saying that in a uh, collinear collision uh, there is an object uh, it is moving with some velocity v naught and it is striking another object which is initially at rest okay after collision the total kinetic energy of the system is 3 by 2 per uh, 3 by 2 times of that initial like you simply it is saying that it is 50 percent greater than original kinetic energy of the system so one thing it is uh, clear that what that half m uh, kinetic energy of this one plus kinetic energy of this one is 3 by 2 times greater than uh, sorry 3 by 2 times of initial kinetic energy so masses are same when you will equate these two equation from that given uh, information what you will get that b1 square plus b2 square is equal to what 3 by 2 v naught square next so we can say that okay this is our first equation next from the conservation of linear momentum conservation of linear momentum because we know that moment linear momentum will remain conserved so m v1 plus m v2 is equal to what m v naught so from here we can get one data that v1 plus v2 is equal to what v naught this is one now we have two equation and they are asking the relative velo velocity of separation the magnitude of relative velocity between the two particle after collision they are asking the uh, velocity of separation so we have two equation we can use this two equation to solve that one so what here I did that I squared this one so I got v1 plus v2 whole square is equal to v0 square it is a little bit just mathematical parts simple mathematics here and now when you will open this one you will get what v1 v1 square plus v2 square is equal plus 2 v1 v2 is equal to v0 square okay next v1 uh, I know this value so I can say that this is equal to 3 by 2 v0 square plus 2 v1 v2 is equal to v naught square after that actually i just wanted to calculate this value v1 v2 is equal to v naught square upon 4 from now what i can do that we know that a minus b because we have to calculate this one so a square plus b square can be written as what a minus b whole square minus plus 2ab so i just use this identity 
to calculate value what v1 minus v2 or v1 minus v2 whole square because we know this value 2 v1 v2 I can uh, uh, shift this value on other uh, right hand side. So v1 minus v2 whole square what I will get this is 2 v0 whole square so v1 minus v2 is what root 2 v0 so correct answer is 4. Next question number 24 the dipole moment of a circular loop carrying a current I is m and the magnetic field at the center of the loop is b1 when the dipole moment is doubled by keeping the current constant the magnetic field at the center of the loop is b2 the ratio of b1 and b2 is okay uh, see this question number 24 is quite easy question we know that magnetic field a magnetic moment formula is equal to what m is equal to if number of uh, if there is only a single loop so i can say that this is equal to ia I a means what I into if its radius is r then it will become what I into pi, pi r square so this is what magnetic moment clear next thing is, uh, what they are saying uh, the magnetic field at the center of the loop okay here magnetic field is what b we know that uh, b when it is given so b when is equal to what mu naught i upon 2r this is your b1 value clear next uh, when the dipole moment is doubled by keeping the current constant okay we are doubling this dipole moment so now di dipole moment is becoming what 2m is equal to i pi if we are making that current constant which means what we are making we are changing this radius so from here from these two value what you can say that r1 square is equal to 2 r r1 square uh, sorry not 2 r uh, just divide these two what you will get 1 by 2 uh, r1 square is equal to what 2 r square so r1 you can say that root 2 r so new magnetic field b2 will be what mu naught i current is constant 2 into root 2 r now they are asking what b1 upon b2 they are asking b1 upon b2 so which means what this one upon this one so directly you can say that this is root 2 by 1 so correct option is first option okay question number 25 the density of a material in the shape of a cube is determined by measuring three sides of the cube and its mass. If the relative errors in measuring the mass and length are respectively 1.5% and 1%, the maximum error in determining the density is. Okay, here they are asking in question number 25, the maximum error in determining the density. So, we know the density formula is what? Mass upon volume clear for cube it is m upon a cube this is your density so delta del by del will be equal to what delta m by m plus 3 delta a by a so here it is given in percentage how much it is given one is 1.5 percent plus 3 into 1 percent so you will get what 4.5 percent answer Question number 26, on interchanging the resistances, the balance point of a meter bridge shifts to the left by 10 cm. The resistance of their series combination is 1 kilo ohm. How much was the resistance on the left slot before interchanging the resistance? Okay, see here, uh, this question is uh, from meter bridge and what they are saying that, that initially, uh, there are two resistance uh, whose series combination is uh, 1000 ohm and initially the galvanometer will is showing zero deflection at some point and when you are interchanging that these two resistances then what is happening that uh, that point that balance point it's shifting by 10 centimeter towards left clear so they are asking that what is what was the initial resistance on the left side before interchanging okay 
so like before inter uh, uh, yeah before interchanging what is happening here uh, we can say that uh, that ratio of r1 upon this x uh, r1 upon r2 is equal to what x upon 100 minus x so just solve this one you will get what this equation you will get from this one you will get this equation first clear second when you are interchanging so in interchanging what you are doing here now it is r2 here it is what r1 so that r2 upon r1 now r2 upon r1 is equal to what that change that x minus 10 upon 100 and 10 minus x because here again you have to subtract minus 10 so minus minus will become what plus so this result you will get Actually, one thing is there that uh, instead of r2 r2 can be written as what 1000 minus r1 because their uh, equivalent resistance in series is given as what 1 kilo ohm clear okay now just these are some calculation because see we have to calculate r1 clear so here just do some calculation little bit adjustment of terms and after solving this one solve for that r1 then after solving this one you will get r1 is equal to what 555 ohm so it is simply that calculation that i just cross multiplied here and uh, you will see that some of the values will be get cancelled out and after that um, by subtracting these two equation here after that cancellation you will get these two equation and just simple uh, that linear equation in two variable just solve that one you will get r1 as 555 ohm clear so correct answer here r1 is what 555 ohm in question number 27 in an AC circuit, the instantaneous EMF and current are given by E is equal to 100 sin 30 t, I is equal to 20 sin 30 t minus pi by 4. In one cycle of AC, the average power consumed by the circuit and the wattless current are respectively. Okay. In one cycle, average uh, average power. So, P average is equal to what? 1 by 2 into I naught into V naught into cos phi clear 1 by 2 i naught is was 20 v naught is 100 into cos phi cos phi is what pi by 4 so cos pi by 4 what you will get 10 10 raised to power 3 cos pi by 4 1 by root 2 so what you will get 1000 by root 2 only one option is there that 1000 by root 2 for that wattless current that should be equal to I RMS that will be equal to I RM is equal to sin phi. Same thing I RMS is how much? 20 into 1 by root 2. So 20 root 2. So here uh, what you will get? Mm -mm -mm. Oh sorry. Here this is I RMS. So I RMS will be 1 by root 2. So root 2 into root 2, 20 by 2. So 10. So correct answer is what fourth option all the graphs below are intended to represent the same motion one of them does it incorrectly uh, see here in this question number 28 uh, four graphs are given uh, and they are um, representing a same motion like out of these four three are representing same motion and one is uh, not correct representation for that motion okay see first we will see one by one first it is position time graph so what we can say about this one that okay uh, initially the rate of the change in position what is happening its slope is decreasing clear at highest point that slope becomes zero so what you can say that okay as its slope is change, uh, decreasing so one thing that will come in mind that magnitude of of a speed is decreasing first after that that is increasing clear because that slope is what this is theta so tan theta and that tan theta is decreasing after that it is increasing okay here in this graph you can see that okay velocity it is but uh, that velocity is decreasing it is becoming zero 
after that its direction is changing but its magnitude is increasing with time so that thing common in these two graph next okay now i am uh, comparing its speed only uh, if speed becomes same in all the four graph then we have to see the other things but first we will see the speed okay here you can see that with position its speed is decreasing and at some position it is becoming zero and again its with respect to position that is speed is increasing so one thing you can say that okay uh, there is such type of motion in which as position like it is going to some point its speed is increasing clear sorry no decreasing and when it is again coming to that initial point its speed is increasing and it is almost becoming same you can say from that symmetry and also this is a parabola so what you can say that okay v is proportional to root x so one thing is clear that acceleration is constant in this one by seeing this graph this parabola that way uh, that one that v is proportional to root x and not only root x i think it is v is proportional to minus root x uh, yeah okay okay we will see it later see this one okay uh, distance time okay here what is the case that as time is increasing okay its slope is increasing with respect to time so what you can say that okay after that its slope is decreasing so it is just opposite of this case uh, this one position time graph initially at with respect to time the rate of change in that slope that was what decreasing here the uh, in this case the ray um, simply the slope means speed initially speed is increasing then decreasing but in this case it is decre uh, decreasing and then increasing so in all this graph you can say that okay this graph is not valid clear that's all okay directly you can okay question number 29 uh, two moles of an ideal monoatomic gas occupies a volume V at 27 degrees Celsius. The gas expands adiabatically to a volume 2V. Calculate A, the final temperature of the gas, B, change in its internal energy. Okay, see here it is uh, saying that uh, there is a gas and uh, this is monoatomic gas. Uh, yeah, ideal monoatomic gas, uh, two moles, and they are uh, expanding adiabatically. Clear? Okay, and its temperature uh, adiabatically expands to a volume of two V. Okay, so they are asking the temperature, the final temperature. So relation of the temperature, T V gamma minus one is constant. Clear? And V U got this one from this. The T V gamma is constant. Use that ideal gas equation you will get what tv gamma minus 1 is equal to constant okay gamma is what cp by cv for monoatomic gas this is direct value gamma is what 5 by 3 so just use this 300v 2 by 3 is equal uh, this will be equal to our final temperature and final volume it is 2v it is becoming double and b will get cancelled out and when you will calculate t you will get as 189 Kelvin nearly equal to what 189 Kelvin next they are asking this same question the change in internal energy we know that change in internal energy is equal to what n into f by 2 where f is what degree of freedom degree of freedom in case of monoatomic gas is 3 clear so simply number of moles is 2 3 by 2 into 8.314 r delta t value from 300 it is coming to 189 so change in internal energy is how much minus 2.7 into 10 raised to power 3 zoom question number 30 a particle is moving with a uniform speed in a circular orbit of radius r in a central force inversely proportional to the nth power of r if the period of rotation of the particle is t then okay see in this question uh, they are saying that that central force is inversely proportional to nth power of r the distance from the center 
and they are asking what is the relation of that with time period time period and the distance from the center of that circle you know that okay it is given the central force f is proportional to 1 raised to power uh, 1 upon r is to power n inversely proportional to r is to power n so just we can say that okay f is equal to k r is to power n this force because it is moving in a circular orbit so it will provide that required centripetal force so mv square upon r should be equal to what k r is to power n from here you can calculate or uh, you, you you will get the relation between v velocity and what that r okay once you know the velocity then time period time period is what 2 pi r upon v clear so 2 pi r upon v so from here v you got one relation so same thing with time period you will get r relation between r and this time period as what 1 minus 1 th just this value see this one and after that you you can get this value there is another method to solve this question is using that m, m omega square r you can calculate angular velocity relation with angular velocity and we know that time period is what 2 pi upon t so uh, sorry uh, angular velocity omega is what 2 pi upon t so from that relation you, you can also calculate this one so that's all